Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to discuss customizing electrical families in Revit MEP. If you want to find out more about our company, check us out on the web at cadtechseminars.com or therevitguide.com. We do training, support, and implementation of Autodesk products, specifically Revit and AutoCAD. Let's get on to tip. In this tip, we're going to discover how to take uh, a regular receptacle that comes with Revit and tweak it. We'll talk about the good, the bad, and how to make it work for you. So I'm going to jump into Revit now. And here we are. Now what I've done is I've just opened up the duplex receptacle that comes in Revit. This is straight out the box, nothing special. So if I was to open this up, I go to, I want to open an existing family. We scroll down here, electrical components, Let me bring this over. Uh, we'll go to power and we'll go to terminals and you'll see duplex receptacle. When I hit open, you'll see it's the exact same one. All right. Now, at this point, everything looks good, but we started to notice some things about this receptacle. For instance, uh, if we go up to the properties box here, and you see family types, and in here, you'll notice that the only option that is set in here is actually the default elevation. There's no other settings. If I drop this down, there's a G GFI, what actually just adds a label in here. But notice there's no sizes. There's no um, adjustability whatsoever. Now, if we hit cancel, let's say, for instance, we need to change this box size. Maybe we're doing, let's say, conduit. We need a 4x4 four four box, uh, maybe even a spe special depth. So we're going to actually come in here and actually adjust the box size and build in parameters to do it. We'll also add conduit connectors so it's easy for someone to run conduit off this box. Currently, not so easy. So um, just so we can test the box, I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to start a new project and I'll just go OK on that. Now here's the basic project and I'm going to go to the architectural tab and I'm going to put in let's say some walls. So there we go. If I go to 3D, here she is. Now if it's time to put in let's say an electrical component, I'll drop this down and I'll pick on let's say device. It's actually off the screen but device and I picked electrical equipment. Now, this says none of them are loaded. Would you like to load one now? So if I come out here and I pick one and load it up, let's say electrical components, again, we'll go to power, terminals, and we'll go to the duplex receptacle, and we bring it in and we place it. Now, it's going to want to stick to the wall. See, it says place on face. It's because of the view I'm in, so I'll go ahead and place it. Now, I place it in here, and let's say I want to now manipulate it. I'm going to zoom in. I'll drop the uh, line work back. Now, when I grab on it, and we look at the properties over here. You'll notice that I've got the elevation, which I can change. It's not a problem. I can come here and change that, and the object will jump up and down, and that's great. But you'll notice that when I select the element, there is no options to change the box size, even if hit type. You'll notice in here we have the default elevation for the GFI, and that's about it. So how do we go about making some adjustments to this family? Well, first of all, we want to make the box, uh, let's say, uh, adjustable. So we're going to add parametrics to it. And then we may also want to add some conduit runs and things to uh, to, to do that also. So here she is in our little temp temporary project. I'm going to hit control tab a couple times and we'll get back to the actual element. Now the first thing we'll do is we're actually going to go and look at it from the front view. Now you'll notice in my uh, Revit here, I do not have my project browser open. Um, You'll notice I just typed in PB. I created a shortcut to open up Project Browser. Uh, anybody can do that just by editing the keystrokes. And if you're wondering, whoa, how did he just do that? Under the View tab, you'll see in here we have User Interface Keyboard Shortcuts. I have a lot of my shortcuts, uh, a lot of shortcuts in Revit just to make life easy. Uh, one is PB. So you can hit this button, adjust the ones you want. So there's a little side tip of the week there. Okay, so in the views, you'll see we have floor plans and we have reference levels. Now, I'll look at this object. You say, oh, okay, looking good. You'll notice that um, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to try to move this box. I'm just going to drag it out a little bit. And notice Revit throws up a, a, a warning. Constraints not satisfied. You're thinking, well, what's going on here? When you look at it, you say, I don't even see any dimensions. How can it be constrained? Well, one of the little secrets about uh, families when you bring them in Notice in this view, I actually see the reference planes. If I go to the left view, notice they're not even there. In the right view, not even there. So sometimes when you open up a view, you're not even going to see 
any reference planes or any dimensions. So to fix that, what we'll do is, back where we're working, we're going to type in VG for Visibility Graphics, and you'll see in here on the annotation, the dimensions are turned off. Once I do this, you'll notice that I can actually see the dimensions up top. If they're too small or too large, you can take this number and, and adjust it. And I adjusted it to 3 quarters, now I can see them pretty easily. So there's the dimensions, and if I pick that dimension, notice it's locked. I pick this dimension, it's locked. I pick this dimension, it's locked. So this object, that box and the plate, are all locked down. Everything's locked, locked tight so it doesn't move. So what we want to do is do two things. First of all, all these locks that are on here are really unneeded. We're going to change them out with para uh, parameters. So I'm going to take loosen that one up. I'm going to break that one loose and I'm just going to go do it to all of them. Because what this is doing is keeping my model from actually doing what I want it to do. So I'm going to uh, unlock everything. So everything's now free to move appropriately. So let's see how this works. So if I take, let's say, two and three quarters and I pick on that reference plane, notice how two and three quarters is now available. I can change it if I want. I'll set four and I hit enter. You'll notice how four feet. Everything jumped. Rabbit didn't throw a fit. Said, okay, cool, we're jumping. All right, so we want to consider um, how we're going to make these adjustments and what we're going to do. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit undo on that, right? Now, at this point, I'm going to actually take this point here and define the origin. And we may actually even pin that one. What that's going to do is keep that one from moving. So I'm going to say pin that one there. All right, now. They have equal, equal, and then we have two and three quarters. So again, I'll pick this element. I'm going to grab this here. Okay. Now grab him. Let's see if we got one here to change. Okay, we'll change that to something different. One enter. You'll see how they jump about like so. So we have the ability to now change them if we need to. So we're going to hit undo on that. And we're going to go on down. Now we've got the box itself, and you'll see the box is there. Maybe we want to change the size of the box. So up top here, I'm going to go and I'm going to, let's say, click on this dimension. Now, currently, there's no parameter. Now, this is the actual um, plate, so let's change the box. I'm going to grab the box. I'm going to add a parameter. Add parameter. We're going to call this, let's say, box width. Type in box width. And I'm going to leave it as a type parameter. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Box width. Now, the next one I'm going to grab on is this one. I'm going to change it. Add a new label. We're going to call it plate width. And we hit OK on that. OK. Now, <clears throat> the next thing we may consider doing is come down here and do the same thing. You'll notice that this dimension is locked. We'll unlock it. And we'll come over here and we'll take this dimension and unlock it. Again, just to test drive it, we'll grab this. And you'll notice how we still have some, some aspects that are locked and things are getting a little weird. So I'm going to unlock a few things here. OK. All right. Again, lots of locks going on here. So we may unlock a few things. All right. Now, Let's give it a shot. We grab it. Let's see. Now we'll change that to let's say six inches, and you can see how things move. So, all right, it's working pretty good. So, with that in consideration, I'm gonna take this. I'll just move that anchor down here. Okay. Now, um, we've moved, the, made an adjustment to that box. So we'll hit undo. Put that back at four and a half. Now that's actually the plate. So we're gonna come in here. We'll grab this, and we're gonna add a new parameter. That's gonna be box. Uh, height, because we're also going to do a depth too. Box height, and then we'll come down here and we're going to hit plate. Add a parameter, plate height. And we hit OK on that. Alright, so now we've got some things going on. Time to test drive it. So you'll notice in here we have the plate and we have the box. Now when you're running hard, uh, running conduit or you're putting in, let's say, uh, stuff, we're not going to use this residential box we want to put in a commercial box which is a 4x4 four four. so we're going to go up top and we're not going to drive anything from here what we're going to do is we're actually going to drive that box from the parameters so let's see what happens I click on the family types now you'll notice this plate width plate height box width box height so let's go ahead and change this to 4 we hit apply and notice how the box actually got bigger now I'm, just, I'm going to hit apply on that you can see it hit OK if I zoom in Let's go back to thick lines. You can see how that's the panel, but see the box has actually jumped. Let's try it in the other direction. Now, we go back to the four square, our family types, and I'm going to set the box height to four. So hit that to four, I hit apply, and you'll notice that the box now jumped to four. So what we have now is the availability to uh, tweak the plate and the tree, tr 
actually tweak the box. Now let's tweak the plate. Let's say it's a um, it's a quad, so we're gonna have to push this and make it larger. So I'm gonna take this object, and we're not gonna edit it from here. I'm just highlighting it so you can see what we're gonna edit. Now we go click grab it here, and I'm gonna say make that plate width. Let's say I want to make it, let's say, just so we can see it, let's make it a uh, 6. It's going to be kind of big, but I hit apply, and see how that, that actual plate jumps to 6. So what we've done now is we've made it where we have full control over uh, the plate. We have full control over uh, the width of the box. Now the last thing is depth. So we're going to hit OK on that. Now in this view, you notice we don't see the depth. Depth is not available. So we're going to go to, let's say, the front view. Now if we go to front, You'll notice that, again, we can see reference planes in here, but we do not see dimensions. So I'm going to look for another option. So the kind of rule of thumb is you want to start on the floor plan first, then go front, and then, let's say, right. Now hit right. I don't see it. I'm going to go left, and then I'm going to go back. And, okay, not seeing anything here. So I notice that front has the reference planes. So I'm thinking, again, they just turned the dimensions off, whoever created it. So uh, VG. We'll then go back, turn the dimensions on, hit OK, and you'll notice again we have the dimensions. Now, this is a, that's, that's the plate, which we'll leave. We don't need to change that. And I pick on the box. Now, when I pick the box, notice again it's, it's locked. So I'm going to unlock it so I can now add a parameter to change it. I'm going to drop this down, add a parameter, and we're going to call this box depth. Now, by taking a minute or two and doing this, what we've done is we've actually set up the box so it's fully... Uh, adjustable. We're going to go back to 3D now. Now you know you don't see a lot of the, the the reference lines in 3D, but that's okay. We can still drive it, drive the box. Now this is the big test. You want to test drive it ahead of time. Notice box depth. I'm going to make it let's say five and eighth. Now I hit apply. I just want to make sure that it drops. So there we go. You'll notice how that changed. So depending on the box size and what you're working on, you may need to adjust it. I hit apply, and you'll see how the math is driving that box. Okay. Now, at this point, I hit OK. What I've done is I've tweaked this box. To verify that it works, I'm going to hit Load in the Project. With Project, we hit Overwrite the Existing Version, and it may blink for a moment. Let's see what's actually happened. We go to 3D. Now I'm going back to Thin Line again. You'll see how the box has been changed. Now here's where we start cooking with gas. When I select this box, you'll notice it comes up, and we'll drag this over so we can see it easier. Let's drag it up. See if it'll shift show let down, okay? And we'll park it right here. Now in the box, you'll notice that we don't have any parameters here. Since we picked type parameters, they're now located in this box. So we have plate and box, all nicely organized. Now the real trick with this is see how we drop this down and they have different sizes or different subcategories? This is where the family part comes in. As I go down here, it says label. Uh, being that I'm not keen on the labels that they use because they you can't rotate them, I'm gonna just get rid of that. Now the real trick is pick one that works for you. Okay, Notice the numbers are all staying pretty static. We duplicate it. Now I can do this inside of the family or I can do it inside the project. If it's inside the project, it is per project and not in the family. Now I'm going to hit, I open this up and I'm going to just, for simplicity, I'm going to say 4 by 4 and we'll say, let's say, with a half inch plastering. Okay, now that means I got to add a half inch to that to that box to make sure the depth's correct. So I'm gonna hit OK. Now at this point, I'm gonna come in here and say plate width. I'm fine with that. Uh, plate height. I'm fine with that. The box I'm gonna set to four. The height or the box height I'm gonna set to four. I'm gonna add, let's say, another half inch to this. So I'm gonna get five eighths deep. Now when I hit apply, you'll notice the depth of the box should actually change. Notice it pushed back a little bit. So that is a um, a four by four box. Let's make a specialty box. Let's make maybe it's going to be a, a six box, whatever we'll call it. I'm going to grab it, and I want you to notice now when I drop it down. See, it says duplex receptacle four by four with half inch plastering, GFI and standard. So now what we do is we start to edit type and we duplicate them. I'll hit duplicate. So I'm going to say let's have, let's say it's six inches. This one's going to be a six. I'll get even crazy. Let's say it's eight by four with a half inch plastering. Now. You're going to have to check your books to verify the size of all these. I'm going to hit OK. Now, at this point, plate width, well, let's say it's a lot bigger now. So I'm going to say, let's say the plate 7. The plate height, I'll say it's constant. Box width, constant. Actually, box width, let's make it 8. And box height, constant. And then the depth, leave. When I hit apply on this, you'll notice that the box 
it's going to actually change. Now, so now I have a new box. And to see what's happened here, we drop this down. And notice I have a 4x4 four four box. And now I have a 8x4 box. And we're good to go. So that's how we do that. The last thing we'll do is, now, um, we can actually do this back in the family. So let me hit Control Tab. If you want to do it in the f family ahead of time, you can do it here also. You're going to do it in this little four square box, so it's called Family Types. We click on it. You see where it says Standard right here? What we can do is we just hit New. Okay? And in this one, let's say it's a, it's a crazy box. It's a 6 uh, by 6. I hit OK. So notice the 6 by 6 is current. Then I'll come down here, I'll hit Box Width, 6, Box Height, 6. I hit Apply. Now, at this point, now I have one that's called, I have my standard. Notice how the numbers change. And then I have my 6 by 6 numbers change. I hit OK. So we can actually change the box. Let's load it back into the project. Overwrite the existing version. All right. Now, let's see what we actually have. We're going to go to 3D again. We grab the box. Now, we drop this down. Notice what's happened. It merged them. So now we have a 6x6. We have a 4x4. And we have a 8x4. So once the box is created, then it's just a matter of creating the subsets uh, of that box. Pretty easy. Now, final tip is adding conduit. So back to where we were. Boom, boom back in the family. Now we're going to move a little faster with this one. Uh, conduit or connectors are pretty easy. You'll see this is a connector. Uh, what that's doing is it's connecting to a circuit. That's a circuit connector. So let's go home. You'll see we have electrical connectors. Okay. We have duct, conduit, pipe, and, and trays. So what we want to do is add a conduit. So I pick conduit. And at this point, yep, that was pipe. Looks just like conduit. Let's try that again. Home conduit, pick it. Now at this point it says individual connector. Yes, we're cool with that. So I'll roll over the surface. You'll see the surface highlights. I hit tab to cycle through different surfaces and I pick. Now that's a big connector. You're like, oh, what is he talking about? If I roll over it, see it says one inch radius. So that's a two foot diameter, excuse me, one foot. That's a two foot diameter conduit. That's a big old conduit. Now just to move fast, I'm going to go hit all four of them. Conduit. So I'm going to roll over the surface, tab, pick it. Roll over the surface, tab, pick it. Roll over the surface, tab, pick it. Now, this box is going to be pop, uh, has an instance knockouts in all four, four edges. I then do a crossing. I'm going to grab all of them. One, two, three. Hold the control key down and pick four. So for simplicity, now I'll change it to zero, space, three eighths. Three eighths times two is three quarter. So that's going to set us up. I hit apply. Now I have a three quarter inch conduit uh, connector on each side. Load in the project, overwrite the existing version go to 3D. There she is, right? Now, that's in the wall. Now, we're going to start cooking with gas. I grab it. N notice all the connectors now. This is awesome. Now, I can do it from right here. I can right-click on that little dot. Draw conduit. Now, what's happening is it's actually drawing conduit from that location. Now, being that this, this model has no conduit really drawn in, it's causing a bit of an issue there. But there she is. Now, um, just to check it out, let's go back to plan view. So I'm going to go back to, let's say, notice there's no electrical loaded in here. That's what, one of my problems I should have done when I put stuff in. So uh, we can grab on these and actually right click and then draw the conduit. Being that I don't have any conduit families loaded in a nutshell, that's why it's, uh, it's not working correctly. So I'm going to go on up here and just try to pick it so I get one. That's why we're getting this here. Uh, we can also try it from above. We'll try it one last time. Uh, from above, you don't see it because of it's a certain type. Grab it. Now, notice when I highlight it, see it has all the connectors. Now, here's where you even get fancier. I click on this connector. I right-click, and I hit Draw Conduit. Notice what it says. Do you want to draw from the bottom of the box at 1 foot 4, or do you want to draw from the top of the box, 1 foot 8? I say 1 foot 8, and off we go. At this point, I'm going to say go up to 9 feet, okay? And then I draw over like so. Now, again, because there's no conduit... Uh, types loaded, it's throwing this error. But it would work, and I apologize that it's not working in this example. But there it is. That is how you build one cool um, electrical component in Revit with just about anything you need. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us on the web. Uh, a couple of web addresses are therevitguy.com or CAD Tech Seminars or also uh, freerevittraining.com. Thank you.